again guys. It strikes me that in my last video I didn't talk very much about the technology that was used to make a multiplayer network game in HTML5. It might seem like HTML5 is an interesting gimmick uh, client technology, but how do you make a web multiplayer game? Well, already Hubris was using Node.js for server. Node.js essentially allows JavaScript code to be executed in a command line and also provides various library functions for setting up a server, listening to a specific port, and so on. Uh, for Hubris, which was my Funky Chua game, I used WebSocket, which is also what uh, Mozilla used for their Browser Quest game. And I decided, uh, since that had worked reasonably well for them, I would use the same technology. For this game, for the Global Game Jam, which uh, is called XX13, we decided to use Socket.io, which is uh, a library that encapsulates WebSocket as well as various other technologies like Ajax, and chooses from amongst those available technologies depending on what's possible between the client and the server, and also what's fastest. Our game very much resembles the game Hidden in Plain Sight, which I hadn't actually played. The theme of the Global Game Jam this year, 2013, was a heartbeat sound. For Kevin, who was my main uh, collaborator on this project, where programming is concerned, uh, this evoked Blade Runner, sort of search for an artificial human. And of course, the distinction would be made based on the heartbeat sound. A real human would have a heartbeat, whereas a robot wouldn't. I proposed that we sort of turn the idea on its head and have a robot trying to find the one human hidden in the crowd. So now we have two teams, a robot team with police robots trying to find human hackers disguised as robots hidden in the crowd. We have a whole bunch of robot artificial intelligence characters that just wander around and communicate with each other on occasion. And the hacker is able to communicate too, but when it does so, slowly infects their target. And when a target is completely infected, they uh, die after a couple of seconds. Uh, it was a very interesting project to work on, especially from a technological point of view. And also, Kevin and I have very different coding style. Kevin, don't get me wrong, is a very brilliant programmer and able to write code very quickly that works very well, but he doesn't tend to obey best practices, and I stick to best practices somewhat religiously, so our two coding styles were often in competition, indeed in conflict. We also had a very talented little pixel artist called Lea on the group, and a third programmer called Jean-Baptiste, who worked on the audio code. Very good of him of course because uh, HTML5 still has problems with audio and we needed something fairly robust to get sound played at the right volume. Speaking of which, uh, I would like to stress the fact that the game is not sending to all the clients the positions of the nearest humans so they can play a sound at the appropriate volume. The clients have no idea which players are humans and which are robots. The client only knows what the server tells it the server only tells it what the rules stipulate it's allowed to know. So for instance, a client who controls a robot police character will not know which of the robot civilians is controlled by a human hacker and which is just controlled by an AI. Likewise, the volume of the heartbeat sound is conveyed as a numeric value, not as a position of the nearest character or anything like that. As a result, cheating should, in theory, be impossible. One of the other interesting things was the fact that since Node.js is JavaScript and so is HTML5, the game is simulated both on the client side and the server side. With the client running at 60 frames per second, the server running at 10 frames per second, the client sends input and the server sends synchronization information to update the positions of all the game objects. This is quite an interesting strategy and seems to work reasonably well. 
I also played around a lot with image magic, uh, trying to create scripts that could compile individual images into sprite sheets in order to help the workflow out between our artists and programmers. That's all for now. Thank you very much for listening and I'll see you at the next chat.